G'day everybody, Matt Ellis with you for the latest edition of the Cricket Library podcast and I'm thrilled to be able to bring you today the story of someone who developed a passion for cricket a little bit later than most of us, the captain of the Brazil women's cricket team, Roberta Moretti Avery. We'll hear about what it's like to be a female cricketer in Brazil, training in lockdown, and transitioning from being a medium pace bowler to a leg spinner, as well as asking her the hard hitting question of the three people she'd most like to have a net with. So time now to sit back, relax and enjoy our chat with Roberta Moretti Avery. And it's a very warm welcome to the Cricket Library podcast Roberta Moretti Avery, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure to be here with you and talk about Brazil and talk about cricket and everything that we've got in between. I I think you're our first international captain who's been a guest on the show. So I'm I'm really thrilled that you can be here. Can you give us a little bit of an insight into where your passion for cricket started? Yes, uh, I'm proud of that. I didn't know I was your first international captain. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah, no, that, that you can tick that one off your bucket list now. <laughs> cool. Uh, well, um, actually, cricket came very late in my life. Um, I, I, born as a Brazilian, we don't know cricket uh, when we were kids. I lived in England. Uh, I moved to England when I was 18 years old, and I lived for seven years over there. And I used to see cricket on TV, and there was a lot of test cricket on TV. There was not many T20, didn't get access to many T20. And I used to look at it and say, oh my God, this is so boring. I, <laughs> I can't watch it. I, I don't understand it. I don't know what these people are doing. I don't know why everyone is wearing white. I, I really didn't understand the game. And I didn't have anyone to explain it for me as well, because I didn't uh, have relationships with a lot of English people. I was So the foreigners also would not have this love for cricket as everyone, the, all the English people had. Uh, but, well, future is a funny thing. And I got married to an English person. <laughs> and uh, I, when I moved back to Brazil, uh, we met another Englishman that lives in the same hometown, the same town as I, as I do. His name is Max Pedersen. Mm-hmm. And he invited my husband to teach cricket for kids in Brazil on this new project that he was working on and to, to, to teach cricket to Brazilians. Uh, and I, I, I was, I, I always been an athlete. So my husband invited me one day to go and play the softball game indoors. Um, and I went, he said, okay, let's, let's do it. I remember being over there, remembering about my childhood and the street game that we used to play. And I hit a ball and I hit a ball. It went for straight four. I was like, man, I can hit this ball. Uh, and I, I think that's where everything happened. Uh, after that softball game, I said, oh, you know what? I can actually play this. I can actually hit this ball. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, the softball games were like this fun evening that everybody got together and had a great time. And that made me say, okay, this is something that I want to be part of. I never thought about playing it professionally, but that's definitely where the passion started for the game. And so when you actually started playing did it just change your whole opinion of the, the white uniforms, the five days, the, the strange feelings you had when you first saw cricket in England, when you actually got to experience it in that fun environment? Is that what really flicked the switch for you? What happened, my, it did change my opinion about cricket. It, it, it did change my opinion about cricket. I kept thinking, okay, this is actually much more fun than I thought. I didn't understand the rules at the start. This is much more than just hitting a ball. Uh, there's a lot of mind games, there's a lot of strategy, and there's a lot of teamwork, a lot of individual work, things, all, all things that I, I love. Uh, test cricket still was an uh, enigma for me because I still didn't watch enough test cricket to understand it, and because test cricket is. Yep. Yeah, and, so, and I think you have to watch it, feel the love for it. It came a little bit later in my life, 
and I have been watching all the the actors and the, all the test series that happen, and I leave my TV on in my office, and I can see everything happening. And now I can say that I actually love that cricket, but it, it came a little bit later with my maturity in cricket as well. Yeah, yeah, and you you played high level golf as well. Can you tell us about how golf might have helped you as a cricketer? Yeah, that's a, actually a very good question. I played golf since when I was a kid. Um, I, I, I represented Brazil youth team when I was a teenager. But when I moved to England, I stopped playing. Uh, when I came back to Brazil, I decided to compete again. And uh, I went into high-performance golfing, amateur level, uh, but I was competing in the national leagues and everything. And yep. to be a good golfer, you need to be extremely dedicated. Um, it's all about your training, your dedication, your mindset. It's all about you. It doesn't depend on anyone else. Yep. And when yep. I got into cricket, I depended a lot on my teammates, but the golf helped me to say, okay, I'm batting. This is my moment. I'm bowling. And to keep that focus that you need on the individual part of the cricket, um, I think golf helped me a lot in this part. Just to know that the effort that I put in cricket was going to be the result that I was going to get. It didn't depend that much on my team in the start, and then it evolved to this, com- this collective team, com- collective sport that now complements us so well. And have you enjoyed going from an individual sport to a team game where you get to share the success with, with a, a collective goal, a, a group of people working towards? Uh, achieving an outcome together? At the start, it was difficult because because I was so dedicated in golf, I I expected everyone to be as dedicated as I was in my cricket team. Yeah. And uh, yep. I was not a, a keeper yet. I was not anything. I was just a player. I was actually a very young player in terms of uh, cricket years. And I wanted everyone to dedicate it as much as I was <laughs> dedicated in cricket. So that makes that didn't make me fun to my teammates at the start. Uh, then I learned that I had to have give everyone its time. It's, everyone had its own way of training, its own way of getting there. And uh, after I got past that point, I loved it. Because team, the, the, the team aspect of cricket, uh, the spirit that we play cricket, how we help each other, how everyone grows together, it's something so beautiful. And uh, now I love it. Um, and for me, it's one of the best parts of cricket. Yeah, and and your passion for training has really come through during this lockdown period. I've really enjoyed following your dedication to your training at home when you haven't been able to get out. You're out there with your husband and, and you're practicing and you look like you really love your training. Can you tell us a little bit about what that experience has been like, having to ha- having to keep focused during what's been a very tough time in the world? Yes. Yeah, you're right. I love training. Uh, I'm a kind of person that uh, I love I love playing the game. Playing the game is absolutely great, but I don't mind training five, six days a week. I, I do like the technical aspects of, of whatever sport I'm playing and how to get better at it. Uh, but cricket was such a good ally for me during quarantine. Because imagine, we have this, all, everyone, everyone has this crazy life, uh, these routines, working everywhere, we don't have time for anything else, and suddenly we are locked down. Yeah. At home, nothing to do, plenty of time, and uh, I, I, I'm quite an anxious person, staying at home, not doing anything was making me crazy. <laughs> and we <laughs> made everyone crazy. But <laughs> bless, my husband was, they didn't know what else to do. So I said, okay, I have a little bit of space at home. I have all my gear here. Let's try to do some uh, cricket stuff so I don't lose everything that I have been working on uh, since uh, we, we went into lockdown. And two weeks before lockdown, we had for the first time an English uh, coach coming here just to, to be with the women's team. So we were like uh, on fire to keep going. Uh, at, the, at the first, my husband was not wanting to help me as much as I wanted to play. Uh, so I decided I, I, I try to create all these things at home, these things to try to bowl the ball for me by itself and uh, to work on my spin that just, had just decided to be an option for me. 
And then I think you realize that, okay, you know what, it's better for me to help her. Otherwise, she's going to break the whole house, <laughs> break all the land, break all the walls. <laughs> and he helped me. And actually, it was very good because he trained so much of his bowling. Uh, he, we trained so much together. We got to know each other's game so well that uh, after, we came, after we came back to training and I had a struggle with batting, he was the first person I spoke to. I said, you know what, I'm having trouble with this shot. What is happening? And he, was, he said, okay. I know what you're doing because I watched for you for four or five months hit 100, 200 balls in our home every day. So let's help each other. So it was a great bowling experience and help, helped me so much mentally through quarantine. It was, it was very good. Yeah, and it's fun because Twitter is a fun place. Yeah, it's <laughs> a, a, an excellent use of your time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you can see that genuine joy in what you're doing when, you, when, when you're training there and you're posting those videos. Uh, it's very obvious to anyone watching that you, you have a, a really deep love of the game. And something something you've been working on recently is your spin bowling. Now, I'd love to know, um, like a, a, a lot of uh, our listeners are in cricket playing nations and as kids we grow up trying lots of things and um, – and playing the game and we, we, we try spinning the ball, we try bowling fast, we, we do all of that from a very young age. But you're, you're taking up spin bowling a lot later in your career uh, than most people was. Can you tell us a bit about that transition and, and, and how's it working out for you? Yes. Well, uh, I'm a 35-year-old cricket player. I started playing when I was uh, 27, 28. Uh, so, and when I learned how to bowl, I learned how to fast bowl. I didn't, we didn't have many spin bowler, bowlers here. We don't have role models in, in, in Brazil. So I didn't see a spin bowler. I didn't used to have access to that on TV. Now we have a lot more live streams and things on TV, but seven, eight years ago, we did it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I learned how to fast bowl and, uh, I had a very good career with it and, um, and I loved it. But uh, as a 35-year-old player, uh, I started to feel a lot in my body, uh, yeah. my hips, my knees. I used to feel so much pain. Uh, last year, South American Championship, uh, I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to uh, keep bowling fast, and I'm going to train as hard as I can to be a good bowler in the tournament. It was very good, but uh, I felt it afterwards, and I kept felt it feeling my knees a lot during training and I said, okay, either I'm going to stop bowling or I'm going to have to find an option, an alternative. And uh, it was funny because our coach left here on 15th of March and on the 17th of March, I said, okay, I'm going to give spin a go. I went with my stuff to train. I took my husband. Uh, this next day, I took our spin, uh, off spin bowler to train with me and I, I said, give me some tips. Where can I start? And actually, I didn't think it was that bad for the first train. Yeah. I said, okay, I'm going to keep working on this. And we went into lockdown. <sighs> I said, okay, that, that, that's great. I just decided to change, to change this. Everything in my bowling. I love bowling. And uh, we went into lockdown. Uh, so I adapted things in our home. I said, okay, actually, it's not bad that I decided to spin bowl because I can actually do my run up mm. into my home and bowl into home and uh, break a few legs in the way. And it, it works out quite uh, well to train at home, but it's not an easy thing to change from fast into into spin, into off spin. And I had the, this big thing happening because I was always trying to off spin and my ball kept going leg spin. Yeah. So I said, okay, I'm doing off spin and the ball is doing leg. I changed my wrist position. I changed my my fingers. I'm doing all these things. And I started recording myself a lot in slow, in slow motion to see what was happening. Yeah. And I realized that my fingers were doing the off thing, but my wrist does naturally the leg thing. Okay. So three weeks ago, I decided to leg thing. <laughs> ah, very, <laughs> very good. And oh my God, it has been a nightmare, but it, I love it now. I, I wasn't content with the, with the off thing uh, results. I still, I, don't, I still don't have the technique for the leg thing, the full technique. I don't have... Uh, I'm still very raw in it, but yeah. the ball can sing like. So I said, okay, this is the way I'm going to go forward. If I want to bowl, I'm going to bowl like thing. And it has been good. It has been great to play against my teammates because 
it's new for them as well. Yeah, yeah. And are there are there role models that you've since since been watching? Like, have you been uh, doing YouTube searches and having a look at other leg spinners and and trying to emulate them? Are there, are there some leg spinners that stand out that you really admire? Well, I cannot. I'm not saying that because he's Australian, but I cannot say I cannot call anyone else about from warning. Yeah. Uh, I read this book. <laughs> I watched every single video that he's got online talking about leg spin. I think he's the greatest ever. Uh, I watched the ball of the center at least a hundred times, maybe. <laughs> uh, so he's the. I usually go for female role models, but you cannot not look at warning when you're talking about leg spin. Yeah. Yeah, the king. He yeah. certainly did it yeah. better than anyone we've ever seen. And um, yeah. in in your in your team at the moment, what's what's training like now? Are you, are you ladies back to being together again? I've seen some 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 footage of you your training. Are, are you doing that uh, regularly, or is that something that you can only do from time to time? Now, since the 9th of July, we are training regularly. Uh, we started with a small group of only seven people. Mm-hmm. We have an area, our training center is a big area, uh, open air. Uh, we have all the measurements. Uh, we have we measure fever. We have alcohol. It's obligatory to train with masks, <laughs> uh, social distancing, and all of that that the Brazilian law has said that we must do. So we are following all the rules. Yep. And uh, the past two weeks, they allowed us to go into 12 people groups. Oh, Which great. is great uh, because we're going to have the – our team is based in two different cities. So the girls from the second city, they are coming to, to our hometown uh, to train from next week onward. So it's great that we have this allowance of 12 people so the whole team is going to be able to train together. And hopefully uh, working towards some cricket matches as soon as you can have cricket matches again effectively. Is that the plan? Yes, that's the plan. Unfortunately, we don't have any cricket matches uh, planned until February 2021. Yep. Uh, international cricket matches, but uh, we 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 want to make sure that we are trained, that we are developing, that we are uh, taking this, uh, advantage from the coach that is back in Brazil for 40 days. Uh, Leon Cook is here with us, so we want to be to be improving, even though we're not playing games. And and with Liam, when he's when he's in Brazil working with you, has he been working with you remotely in that time as well? Yes, he has. Uh, it's it's funny because I have a tripod and I put him on my tripod and we do this uh, training together. Uh, it, it seems very futur- very futuristic. <laughs> Something that uh, <laughs> I am working with this brain on my, my on my phone. But yes, he has been working with us remotely. Uh, giving us the training scheduling, scheduling and following what we're doing, but it's much better when we have him here as well. Yeah, yeah, it would be absolutely outstanding having him for the next forty days there, and I imagine you'll be soaking it all up and and loving every minute. Can can we talk about some of your career highlights? Um, what what are some things for you as captain of the team or as an individual that you look back on and you think, gee. That was a that was a proud moment for me in, in my cricket career. Uh, I, I have so much trouble deciding moments in my life because I think it's going to sound very cheesy what I'm going to say, but I think all of them are important. Yeah. Uh, but for me, when I got the captaincy, it was very special. Um, first, because what I said before, I had trouble when they start dealing with the team aspect of cricket uh, because of the high expectations uh, that I put into everyone else and yep. to to learn from that and to become a person that I was a team player uh, and to become a person that was helping the team and uh, a person that the team decided that was the one that they wanted to lead us forward uh, was was really, really special because it showed that I had actually evolved as a person uh, as much as I want uh, as, as a player. Um, I had two moments that I, I, I love. Uh, the first was the final in the uh, the final of the South American Championship in 2016 in Brazil. Yeah, uh, we were playing against Argentina and um, we won the final. It was when I hit my first six 
and oh, I took yes. uh, of course I, I love that moment I still see it in my mind and I took three weeks I was MVP of the final end of the tournament and that that one showed me that I actually could play cricket that yeah. was everything that was happening before was not luck was like okay you know what I can do this uh, I can be good at this and I can be a difference for my team yeah can you can and, you talk uh, us can you yeah. talk us through your first six? I, I love hearing stories about people hitting their first sixes. Um, <laughs> I can remember mine vividly. You know, I, I'm actually seeing it in my brain right now. Um, can can you talk us through the feeling of hitting that first six and um, w- where did you hit it? It doesn't get out of our minds, does it? Yeah, it's 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 uh, there. It's a permanent reminder. Yeah, I rem- it, it was. We were playing the final. We were batting first, and uh, I think it was a 19th over, 20th over, and uh, they had these two great bowlers, one up spinner, and a slow bowler that was always hitting the ball in New York Island. And uh, I, I was always playing the back foot. I, I loved playing the back foot, and I, I, I saw this slow ball coming, and the 19th over, we were, we had to score some runs, and I, 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 something came to my mind said, go on the front foot. And I went in the front foot and hit this straight over the bowler's head six. And I didn't know it was a six. I just thought that I had hit it hard. Yeah. And up. And I was like, okay, this looks, this looks good. And uh, all my teammates were in the boundary when the ball went for a six. And as soon as I saw them shouting, six, six, I went into my knee. And I literally <laughs> cried in the middle of the pitch. I have a picture of my hands in my head. My teammate, like, Roberta, we still have two overs to go. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, I hit my first six. And uh, I, I remember that moment so well. It was so emotional. And the next ball was like, okay, you know what, focus. You still have some balls to go. You're still playing the final. Let's, let, let's, let's have it done. Yeah. Uh, but was, and it was uh, uh, the six for me was my best six. Until this day, i done a few others, and uh, that one was definitely my best one. Oh, that's awesome! That's awesome. And you, sorry, you're about to tell us another another one of your your favorite moments there as well. Yes, I, I, uh, on the 2019 um, South American Championship, we are again playing against Argentina. They are our biggest rivals in South America, and we had a very low um, score to chase. We had a both games against Argentina. We had a very low score to chase, uh, but they have a very good bowling attack. And I remember playing that game with the, with a, with a confidence that I don't think I ever had in my life. Uh, I knew that if I kept in the game, we were going to have a good chance. And, uh, it was, it was not my best result. It was not my best batting, um, uh, score or anything similar to that. But the, the calm that I had on that day for me was, was one of the best, uh, uh moments of my career. And that one from the best captaincy that I ever had uh, with my team. I don't think I put myself first I, uh, at all. Well, yeah. since I'm a captain, I'd never put myself first. Uh, but I definitely put my team. I, I was able to make my team grow as we needed to win that tournament. And uh, for me, that 2019 showed that, uh, you know what, I'm actually growing as a captain as well. And I'm growing yeah. as a person that is making a difference positively in my game. In my team, sorry. Do you enjoy oh, the do, do you enjoy the challenge of being the captain and having to, uh, like you mentioned, you, you've got your own game to think about. You've but you've got the team to look after as well. Do you enjoy the intricacies and the tactics of the game and having to think on the run and make quick decisions? Yes, yeah, I do like I, I do like that. Uh, I love to watch games and see what people are doing, and I love to. To, to watch the interviews and I like the, the fact that now people are talking more about their what they're actually thinking in the interviews and not what is poli- pol- politically correct yeah uh, so I have to learn from them I love to read books we, we, we about cricket and actually get in the, uh, inside their heads as well I, I, I do like that I think because I, I got cricket so old in my life uh, and um, I, I, I am I'm still a young First, in terms of captaincy, I have so much to learn. So sometimes I say, "Okay, I never done this in my life." You know, I, I still have to learn a lot. But but I love to, to make these decisions and make and, and know that I'm the one making those decisions in my my team. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 
Now, you, you've done a sports management and marketing degree, is that right? Are you, are you balancing um, work and cricket at the same time? What's it, what's it like for a, a, a female cricketer in Brazil in terms of uh, cricket life balance? Yeah, uh, I, I always worked into administration, uh, into other uh, into other areas. And uh, in 2015, uh, Matt, which is the president of uh, Cricket Brazil, is the, and the person who introduced my husband into a cricket lesson, invited me to uh, being the board of Cricket Brazil and uh, help start getting the female, the women scenario uh, into the next step. So I started working on that, and it was a, a difficult moment in my life because it was, I had some health issues, so I was going through a few things and uh, playing cricket. So I, I wanted to give it back to the, to the team. I wanted to help us get into the next step. It was when I decided to actually study the area of sports and go into the sports administration. So now I work as the media officer in Cricket Brazil, and I work a lot in the, in, into the board to help us, okay, what, how can... How can we structure this better to grow uh, and keep this sustainability that we've got until now stronger for to grow even further? We have a plan to... Currently, we have about 4,000 kids attending projects for cricket. Uh, we had our plan for this year to achieve 33,000 uh, 33, kids wow. in the two new regions. Yeah. Yes, it's a massive uh, improvement. But because of quarantine, it has been postponed for 2021. But this is something that I love to work with, and I love to say, okay, we have to get more coaches, we have to get more equipment, we have to get how it's going to be the structure to get over there. Uh, so me and Matt, Matt is the one who leads it all, but I like to be a support for him on, the, on those matters and uh, help achieve these dreams. And, and is that part of your hope for Brazil cricket? You, you want to inspire the next generation of players to come through and see someone like you as a role model and so the, the boys and girls uh, in Brazil, to have a, a taste of cricket at a younger age and really capture that love of the game, is that is that kind of your longer-term vision for what you want to see? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think I always wanted to tell the new generation that they can achieve some uh, whatever they want, uh, yeah. but they have to fight for it. They have to, they have to, to dedicate themselves in it. And... In cricket, I found a, a perfect way to do that because I think the way cricket is structured in Brazil, in the world actually, but the way the cricket is with the values it has, the spirit it has, is a perfect sport to actually say, okay, you know what, you can do whatever you want to do. Let's work for it. And uh, to, to be able to inspire girls mainly, that, that's something that I, I'm very passionate yeah. about. Because yeah, there's a lot of other sports that are getting the girls down. Yeah, if you're not fit, if you're not quick, if you're not strong, you're not good enough. And it uh, doesn't matter if you, how, how, uh, how good you are, uh, if you're not fit enough or if you're not quick enough, there's something that you can do to improve and uh, get yourself team up and change you as a girl and as a woman for the future. And I see some girls coming through the pathway now that have been rejected in so many other sports in Brazil and they're now getting this great bowling action, this great batting and yeah. they, you look at them and say, Man, you can do it. And uh, you see the, 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 the eyes shining. And uh, for me, that makes my day. For me, that, that, that's something that not, the money doesn't buy this feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I'd like to know um, from you as well, earlier this year, International Women's Day, the World T20 Final at the MCG, a massive global sporting event and... What, what, what does something like that mean to you uh, watching on from Brazil, seeing, seeing so many people engaged in, in women's cricket for that World Cup final? That was such an amazing day. I watched the whole World Cup. It was a, it was a tough month because all the games were happening like 2 a.m. in the morning for us. <laughs> <laughs> so oh. I was sleepwalking a lot of times. <laughs> uh, but first thing was, it was so cool that the games were happening at that time for us. And I was talking to girls from Chile, from Costa Rica, from Argentina, from Brazil, and we were discussing these games, which means 
a lot of us in this side of the country were following these games on such a difficult uh, time for, for, for us and everybody was watching, everybody wanted to know what was happening. And it was not only on the final, but in the games prior to that, everybody was watching silent and the, where the things coming from and the, the big change of them. So when we actually, in the semifinal for me, it was heartbroken to not have uh, the England in the semifinal. Yeah. But it was amazing to see the South Africa and Australia once. And uh, so when we reached the final and we saw 86,174 people attending, it, I, get, I get the two until now. Yeah. And uh, for, for Australia to put such a big show, uh, actually, actually, I'm not sure if you to know about that. I, I went to Australia in 2017 to do an interchange program with Cricket Australia and Cricket Victoria. Ah, there you go. Yes, and they were working so hard on uh, women's cricket and mm. women's cricket development. And I went into a lot of clubs. I saw a lot of schools. I saw the plan that they had. I saw the, everything they were doing to women's cricket. And to see that three years afterwards, that final, the, the, in everything that is happening, and the power of the women's BBL, uh, BBL it, it, it just shows that the work, all the work they have been doing for the past four or five years is, is paying off. You can see Australia's teams is in a different level. Uh, you can see the league is in a different level. And you can see the World Cup was just an amazing event. Yeah, yeah. And how was your time in Australia? How long did you get to spend over here? I spent one month in Melbourne. I was uh, three blocks away from the gym. Uh, oh. I was doing all my reports. It, that's where the test cricket uh, love started because I was watching, all, uh, doing all my reports, uh, sitting down in the gym, watching the test matches happening two, three, four days, and it was amazing. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was one of the best uh, work experiences in my life in cricket by far. It was, it was amazing. Oh, it sounds incredible. And just just quickly while we're on watching cricket, uh, you were at the Men's World Cup in England. Can you reflect on that and what that was like being a fan at a, a major moment in sport like that? Oh, that, that was a great week. We were invited as Brazil to be part of a um, street cricket championship. Uh, where each country would take the street cricket game and would play a competition, Tropical Square in London, two days prior to the World Cup final. Uh, so we went with a group of eight people. It was so good. Uh, a lot of these kids have never been to Europe. A lot of them have only traveled because of cricket, because they come from poor backgrounds, social projects. Mm. They have been with us now doing uh, university uh physical education courses because of cricket, cricket playing for all, all the, the, the course, so they become coaches. So this, we, we took these kids to England to play this tournament and to watch the final. I, I always, I expected the final to be a great game. I watched the Australia, New Zealand uh, in the qualifying group yeah. uh, at the same place uh, at, at Lord a few weeks before. So I expect the final to be amazing, but uh, I never in my wildest why the dreams I would think that I would watch a super over in the final and uh, and the, that ball from Ben Stokes going out of the ground and the, everything that was happening, it was, I have no words. Yeah. I have no, and for a few days I had no voice as well. I felt it so much. <laughs> uh. There was a moment I was looking into the guys and I was pulling up this, this, this chance from the crowd and I was looking to the, I was sitting in, I think, the second row. And I was looking back and talking to the guys. I said, you can shout louder. We can scream louder. <laughs> and the next day, we went to the Kia uh, We saw some of the players and we were doing this tour. And uh, a girl came to me and said, I know you. I said, you were the girl yesterday making sure that everyone was shouting in the stands and screaming in the stands. I said, oh, my God. I'm not sure if I should be embarrassed by this moment or if I should be proud of this moment. <laughs> <laughs> but it was an amazing day. That that final, it was. It, I think it was the best day of the life of almost everyone that was in the ground. Yeah. Well, apart from the music, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, 
Now, finally, before we finish off, I, I, I need to ask you our favourite question. This is one uh, that our listeners really love to know. If you could invite any three people to the Nets, you, you get to train with them and play with them, talk to them. Um, who, who are the three people that you're inviting? And I know you love a net session, so I, I'm very interested to know who your picks are here. So, yes, that is so difficult. <laughs> really, really difficult. But let, let, let's try. Uh, and I'm going to try to explain and be fair to all of, all of these beautiful people. Yeah, uh, yeah. If I, if I was uh, batting, I would love to have uh, Marys and Kat oh, from yes. South Africa. Yeah, yeah. Because she's the only person that takes a hat trick and doesn't lose her fierceness face. She, she doesn't even smile when she takes a hat trick. So I think that would be quite a scary moment of my life, but I would love to try that on and see what is, how, 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 how does that feel? A, a very, uh, ser- a very name- serious customer, Marazan Cap, isn't she? You're right there. She, she's very good at not displaying any emotion at all, just has that game face on all the time. Yes, she, she, she has a serious game face on all the time. And I watch, uh, I support the sisters in the women's BBL and uh, she, she, she just, every time she's bowling, I'm watching. It, she's amazing. I love her so much. Uh, then I would, I would go for the spinners. Uh, I would love to bat against Bunam Yadav uh, bowling. Oh, yes. I think she's so smart. She's such a good spinner. She's very short. And she does magic with the ball. Uh, I, I, I love her, and uh, I'd love to, to try to play against that. And if I had to bat against anyone that I would love to watch bowling very close to me, I cannot say anyone else. He's the only man from my list, which is Dave Warney. Yeah, he, he has to be there, isn't it? Yeah. He, uh, probably I would struggle so much, but just for the fact that I could see him bowl so close to me, it, it, it would. I, would, I wouldn't mind not hitting a ball. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm ball coming through my, the back of my leg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he'd be keen to give you a few tips with your bowling as well, Warney. I reckon. I, yes. re- I reckon he'd, he'd love to do that. Now, um, I, I've I've thoroughly enjoyed hearing more of your story, Roberta. It's it's a really great insight into cricket on the other side of the world from us in Brazil. Uh, an emerging cricket nation. You're very passionate. I really do love your passion for the game. And I, I love your desire to see cricket grow in in your home country. And I, I really do wish you all the best um, with not only your own playing career, uh, but also in, in that role that you're playing as the leader of the Brazil women's team of inspiring that next generation of little girls that are, that are going to come through and, and grow to love the game like you do. And we, we really thank you so much for joining us on the Cricket Library podcast. No, thank you for, for this day for, to, to talk about Brazilian cricket. And um, one of the things that Karen King was very good was to actually meet guys like you and get in contact with uh, you through social media and see how how close the world can be uh, when we have this great tool uh, to, to meet people that are as passionate as we are uh, about cricket. So thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. A massive thanks to Roberta Moretti Avery for joining us on this edition of the Cricket Library podcast. What a wonderful story. That time spent living in England, not really understanding the game of cricket, but then later in life, developing what is a genuine passion and love of the game. The captain of her country and certainly putting a foot in the right direction towards growing the game in Brazil and loved hearing her reflections on some of those career highlights. I particularly love the story she shared about hitting a first six straight down the ground and just the raw emotion from that success. Loved her net session options, Marazan Cap, Punam Yadav, 
and of course Shane Keith Warren getting a run in there and a, a lot of that uh, to do with her wanting to develop her skill as a leg spin bowler herself recently transitioning from being a fast bowler to being a, a, a leg break bowler and looking forward to watching that progression in the future well i must say a massive thanks to you our listeners as well i really have thoroughly appreciated the support we've had for the cricket library podcast from our loyal listeners and i thank you very much for tuning in once again please remember to subscribe and we'll keep you across Oh, that'll keep you across all of the latest things that we've got coming up and we've got some exciting things happening in the next few weeks so keep your eyes out for those and it's time for me to bid you all farewell this has been matt ellis for the cricket library podcast bye for now